is probably best for my client's hair type and um, length of hair to just cornrow the hair straight back. Now since my client's hair is fairly short, I'm just going to use rubber bands on the ends. Now if her hair were a little bit longer or if I decided to use um, synthetic hair, you could just take those loose ends and stitch them back to the cornrows just the same way you would if you were doing a full head of weave. What you would do with those loose ends is you just take them, fold them back, and stitch them down so that they stay in place. Now this is an option if you decide to coil roll the hair. You don't have to. You can gel the hair straight back, you know, or you can pin curl it, whatever is comfortable. I am always comfortable with cornrows. So those are just your options. Be sure that you pick what best fits you and your client. If you want to minimize the amount of rubber bands you're using, you can feel free to combine two cornrows into one rubber band just like what I'm doing here. Now the next thing we're going to do since we've already prepared the clients here for measurements is take the measurements. So the measurements that I'm going to take for this are obviously the measurements from the top of the hairline or front of the forehead back to as far as I want it to go. In this case I'll do a four inch frontal and then I'm going to go ear to ear. Now you're going to measure from the top of the ear all the way across to the top of the other ear. To measure your plastic wrap, you want to pull the desired length of plastic off. Take the scissors and cut it straight across. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the pattern. So I'm going to place the plastic wrap on the top portion of my client's head but you want to kind of leave enough down to where you have enough room for the hairline. Make sure that they don't cover the ears because you need to draw in the ears to check your measurements once you get done with the pattern. Now it's time to tape your pattern to keep it in place. You're going to tape all the way down to the ears. Now that the pattern is complete, it is time to block the pattern on your wig block. But before we do that, I'm just going to take a little bit of stuffing to stuff the inside of my pattern to prevent it from caving in. Once you lay the stuffing in the pattern, you're going to need to temporarily pin the pattern in place by using your bald straight pins. Right now I'm just using bald straight pins to keep the pattern down until I go back in and use the regular straight pins. While your pattern is temporarily pinned down, you're going to place your first pin at the center of the pattern just like what you see here. Now that you've blocked the pattern on the wig block, it's time to dye the lace so that you can block that later as well. Now when you're dyeing your lace, the first thing you want to do is cut a piece of lace. Now you're going to cut the lace according to the size of your frontal, so you'll need to place the lace over the blocked pattern to ensure that you're cutting enough lace. Now I've chosen two different colors of writ dye to dye the lace. Now this is ready mixed writ dye and it's dark brown and tan. You want to be sure to completely submerge the lace in the dye so that it is evenly distributed. After you dip the hair in each color, you want to be sure to rinse the hair in the water. You can barely see where the lace starts and ends, which is exactly what we want. Now we're going to be using the, the bald tip straight pins to temporarily pin it in place. And when you're blocking your lace, you're going to use the same technique we did when we blocked the pattern. Once you've pinned the lace in place and have placed the pins exactly the way you want them, go ahead and block the lace just as you did the pattern. Now to pin the back, you want to start at the center, slide your finger all the way back and stick a pin there and then you're going to work your way down the sides. What I'm going to show you next is how to make a notch or a fold. When you're pulling the lace down in the back, you need to be sure you're pinning the lace nice and snug. It should lay nice and flat on the pattern. Now, When you get to the fold, pin the area in the back down with two to three pins to be sure it's securely pinned down. Then you're going to stick a straight pin at the very tip of the fold to ensure it stays put when you get ready to tack it down. 
Lock the first stitch in place by going in the same hole twice and then proceed with the stitch. Once you start sewing, you want to be sure to go back a little into the previous holes to ensure that it stays in place. Now remember, you're only going to stitch down the open end. This does not have to be done perfect because the hair is really what's going to hold it together. This is basically like a quote unquote temporary hold. Once you get the first side stitched down, move on to the other side and do the exact same thing. Okay, so now that we have completely dyed the lace and we've created the custom cap, it's time to call the client in for another fitting. Okay, now once you've completed the pattern, because we sewed the notches in the pattern, you need to refit your client or fit the cap back on your client to, to ensure that it fits properly, just like I would if I were adhering the cap down. So now that we've done our fitting for, with the client, we have completely blocked our lace back on our pattern, which is on the wig block, and now it's time to ventilate. Once you get ready to ventilate, pinch a small portion of hair from the drawing card and pull it in a downward direction. Don't pull too slow because this will cause the hair to get tangled. Once you do this, Take the hair and fold it down a little with the loop sticking out of your two fingers holding the hair, which are the thumb and the pointer fingers. To start ventilating, place your needle in the hole you've decided to start in. Slide the hair over the needle just long enough for it to catch one to two strands of hair. Once the hair has been hooked, pull it back through the hole. And you want to make sure you're holding the hair in the other hand tight. It's very important to control that hair with the middle finger. In the same motion, take the needle and wrap it once around the hair and pull it back through the loop. Pull again to tighten it. Now, when you get to the notch, you want to be sure that you are, your ventilating needle is going through all the layers, through all the layers all the way down to the bottom to ventilate the hair on the notch. This is what's going to actually hold that notch together. The stitch is just like kind of like a temporary hold, but the hair that you ventilate on there is really what's going to hold it together. So be sure that you're taking your needle all the way down to all through all layers of that lace and coming all the way back up and, ven and ventilating that hair. Once the top is done, you'll notice that the hairline is not completed. I like to go back and fill in the hairline last. I like to do this because to me it's the most important and it's very time consuming. So I like to devote all of my attention to only the hairline. So I like to finish that last. Once you pull all the hair up into a ponytail, start removing the pins with your needle nose. Be sure not to puncture your lace. Once the frontal has been removed from the wig block, you can call your client in for what I like to call a dry fitting, just to be sure everything worked out. Be sure to check the size to ensure the frontal properly fit. Okay, so what I'm about to do right now is I'm going to trim the lace off of the back portion of my frontal. What I'm going to do with those one and a half to two inches is I'm going to fold them down and then I'm going to sew them down so that they can stay in place because you're going to want to have a nice and tight foundation or something to sew the frontal down to. You don't want to just sew on one layer of lace because the lace is so fragile it's going to rip. Okay, now, before we sew the tracks in the back of her head, we need to figure out exactly where the back part of the frontal stops so that we know how far to come up with the tracks. Once you've wiped the area with the 91% alcohol, it's time to put the scalp protector on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a thin coat of adhesive around the hairline where the scalp protector is. 